right? The very first statement when working in a function is executed first. Like if talk we if we talk like in a loop. So the very first statement execute and then the second, then the third, if there are the numerous kinds of statements over there in the loop, right? Or if you say if you like stand in a queue, right? So the first, then second, then third, then fourth, then fifth continues, like in an order. Or if you want to jump to some like one, two, three, or three, or you want to skip the fifth one. Okay. So that makes something called as a loop. So would you go just one by one, iteratings, okay? So there are three kind of loops in Python. Okay, we'll be learning all the three kinds. Okay. So for a while we do we say, right? Then there is another two. So mo mostly you say has to be the two, for and while. And then the combination of that we call as an nested one, that's it, right? So basically you can say that that's a two type of loops and then you can say as a combination of a nested loops, okay? So if you go with the loops, so what exactly the loop is? Just used for iterating over a sequence that can be of any data type, like it can be of a list, it can be of a tuple, it can be of a dictionary, of a set, of a string, anything. Right. In case of a string, you will be getting individual elements of that string or individual characters of that string. All right. These are the things. All right. Uh, let's see. It. So if uh, we'll be going with the very first thing, that is your for loop, right? So for loop, while loop, and the nested loops. Okay. So let me write something over here. So what do we write here? Like a loop. Let me remove the line. But you can say to the dog of words. Okay, but you can just write used for iterations. Hmm? Okay. The three kind as I said there are Three different are there are for loops, then while loops, and then nested loops. Okay, so Python programming language has this while loop as the top order. What we go ahead with the startings, right? That is, we do learn first doing the while loops. Okay, so what exactly is a while loop? So while loop, just do one thing that it, it repeats the code or you can say the statement or the group of statement block of codes while a given condition is true. Right? Conditions we have learned if conditions right. Okay. So till the conditions are true, your loop will be running. Or you can say you will be iterating. Right. You will be moving around and around till your conditions are true. Like if I give a question and say until this, uh, until you do the question correct, you will keep doing it, right? So you are in a loop of completing the question correctly, right? So until you do it correct, you will not come out of the loop. So that's a loop, okay? So that is a case of a true statement, okay? Uh, if someone is waiting there, uh, yeah. Okay. So while loop is something which R E T E A T S repeats. Okay. Uh, statement or block of codes uh, till or until whatever you write until the 
given condition is true that should be kept in mind always until the given condition is basically it tests the condition before executing the body of the loop now body of the loop is something like we have learned the if what is there required like the conditions then the statements and then the colon and in the next one there you have the following lines for the execution of that right similarly here with the while what we will do is we will be writing programs and we will be running it basically with a very simple very simple thing okay so like if i say while sorry while okay and in there you write the conditions okay after this while you write up your conditions and that's it you'll be running with your loops okay that's it very very simple it is i will go ahead let's say uh giving you a very short example for that okay just a minute okay Let's say my number is equals to three. Okay, I want to run a loop until the number becomes three. Right? I want to print the things until it becomes three. Okay. Uh, if I say this is zero right now, okay. So I say that while my number is equals, I can say it like. Starts on zero, less than three, uh, four. As it so, as soon as it become four, print here. Now, oops, we have entered. An infinite loop was run there. Execution has been done, and you have to give it this right. So once you write your num is equals to let's say I start from zero, okay. So till it is less than my four, okay. Till it is less than four, that is up to the three I want, right? So after printing, what I'll do is incrementing this using the assignment operators. We'll run this. So I get what zero one two three. If I start from one. I'll be getting it till the one, two, three, right? So incrementation was the missing terms. Okay. So what happened here? Like if you write num is equals to one, then while this condition is true, that is num is equals to four, uh, sorry, less than four, right? So it will test that num is one right now and it is less than four. So it becomes true. It get printed. After printing, we'll assign the num value, or we will be incrementing the one, num value with one, right? That is. The one was there, okay. So one plus equals to one, it becomes true, and then two is less than four again, true, and then goes something like this, okay. So until it becomes four, it keeps on printing. See till three, okay. If I starts from directly four, what happen? No output you will be getting, right? Because four is not less than four. Correct. And if I what I do, if I make it greater than, I'll be going in an infinite loop. Like if we say five is greater than four, so it will be running. Okay, so that was the problem. Infinite loop. If you write a wrong condition, you will be getting an infinite loop. That will be keep on running and running and running. Okay, you need to check things. So make it one, run it, and you will be getting this. Okay, so very easy things. Okay. Now, so in the loops, you have two kind of statements again. One is called as continue statement, and then there is a break statement. Okay, okay. 
So let's go with the continuous statement and the break statement. Let's learn what it is. Now let's say that I am printing the numbers from 1 to 3. Right? But I don't want 2. A very simple thing. There, there are a lot of numbers. Let's say uh, we have a queue of 10 students. Okay? So 10 students are there. And we say that we are going to skip the seventh one uh, we, we we don't want to print this seven one right uh, you just want to skip it out for skipping those numbers or skipping anything in a loop you will be requiring something called as continue okay now if you just want to stop like if you want to go with uh, selecting only five students from the top order so from the top order like it would be one two three four five that's it so as soon as you reach 5, you will stop. Right? So that comes in the break statement. Okay? So that is your break statement. Okay? What happens there? You can stop the loop even if your while conditions are not false. Right. So in the same program, what I'll say, my i is equals to right now as uh, 11, sorry, 1. And I'll say while my i value or the number, let's say, don't keep any confusions with this. If I say why my number, is what was there less than 11 then a colon right so what i'll do is after this thing i will just print this number that is once a number is being checked and then you print it now after printing what you do is you check it once how you check it like if now your number is equals to 5 as soon as you reach 5 what you will do is you will break okay and then you come out of the break like in the if okay come out of the if and then increment your number because if you don't increment how will it be incrementing like one it will be keep running in the one right so that will be a problem so one two three four we want so when we'll run this we'll get one to five right okay now with the same thing like if if the case is like we want total uh, let's say nine students okay and we want to skip this fifth one so what we'll do is we'll just copy this let's take it from here and this time we'll be running the continuous statement now if you want to skip something that's it very easy So here you are going to skip it. So we'll paste it there. So continue means basically continue to the next iteration without following the if or without breaking out the loop you can say. Right. So here the conditions let it be as it is. Okay. Only the iteration part what you have written below will have to be there. This should be like this and the printing should be done at last that's it i don't need to break to print it so we want to skip this okay we want 10 right so 1 to 10 and 5th has been skipped so what has been done num was 0 while number is less than 10 starting from 0 right so from 1 to 11 you can also go okay uh, then the number plus 1 is equal to here this i am incrementing the things okay so that's why i have started from 0 otherwise i would have started from 1 because if i start from 1 i will be getting numbers from 2 right so we'll start from 0 incrementation has been done and then 
uh, directly we'll check that if the number is equal equals to 5 or not if it is equals to 5 we'll skip that it is not if it is not then we'll print the number then again it will come here it will check it will increment it will continue like the things okay as soon as it reaches 5 we'll be skipping that part we'll not print that part okay directly we'll be going to here okay that's how the continue goes okay i hope that is clear to you okay fine now there is one more statement called as the else statement that is not very much important or you can say this statement is just used to print something like once you come out of the loop you need to print this that's it very simple okay so like uh, let's say in the same code here if you say that loop ended so we'll just take as else not inside the if okay but because that will come inside the loops so we'll just take print loop ended that's it see loop ended okay one two three four six seven eight nine ten loop ended that's it so else can be just used as a condition not sorry not as a condition as a statement to print something in the last of your loop if you want even if you want to print a second number like let's say uh, till 10 it is right but still i write 11 so i'll getting the number still 11 right so that's the thing it can be used to print something at the end of the loop right so these are the things inside the while loops okay so using the while loops you can go with various type of questions right a lot of questions can be done using the while loops the tables initializations of the sums right like if i uh, give a very simple program very simple add uh, 10 natural numbers let's say so that we have a formula basically right but we'll be applying the very basic thing i think that is the sum will be equals to whatever the numbers will be entering n1 n2 like that okay so we'll take input from the user right so to take input you would have to take it as input the n okay but here, if we are saying the 10 natural numbers, we will just say n is equals to 10. Okay. And then we will write, now the sum is equals to 0. Okay. And let's say that your number is equals to 1. You are starting from 1. Right now, you apply the while that is, while your number is less than equals to 10, how do you say less than equals to your n, your number, what you expect, right? Till 10. So, the condition will come that is equals to 10, and the rest conditions will be going in that is less than 10, right? So, while this is less than equals to 10, what it will do is your sum would be equals to sum plus the number whatever the number you are taking right that is coming there iterations i'm talking about right and it'll be incrementing it that is number would be sorry number would be equals to one okay number equals to number plus one or number plus equals to one that's it very simple okay then it come out of the loop and it will print. So once being done everything, let's say sum of 10 natural numbers is sum. You can run this and you can see the self-certified. Otherwise what you can do is 
Once you have assigned the n equals to 10, you can just print with the formula that is n into n plus 1 complete divided by what is the formula? n divided by plus 1 by 2 something 55.0 make it this right are you going to use the formula are you going to use a loop two different things are different okay so you're going to make calculators a lot of things okay and you can make guessing games but that requires a lot of statement techniques too okay so that is a different part okay let's go to the uh, for loops okay so break statement is clear to everyone i hope right so break statement terminates the loop statement and then transfers your execution to the statement immediately following the loops right and continues causes the loop to uh, skip the part you want to skip it right or skip the remainder of the body and just keep continuing to the next one that's it reiterations you can say okay that's it so these are the things very simple and there one small statement you will be getting in your examination of Microsoft uh, called as pass statement right so pass will be lear uh, learning on don't worry okay so pass is very simple actually it does nothing basically like if you go with the help of pass event, you'll find it is nothing actually. What is it? Hmm. Documentations are actually not there. Uh, we'll have to write it inside this. We'll get in. So there's a null operation. See, when it is executed, nothing happens. I'll ask why do we use okay so when a statement is required syntactically uh, but you don't want any command or code to execute this we just use this pass statement right so it is useful in places like where your code will eventually go but has not been written yet okay so let's start the for loops we'll learn how it works all right so for loop executes now in the while loop you see you have seen right until your conditions are true it is uh, going to run right so as soon as your conditions become false it will come out of the loop that's it. very simple right and in the case of your for loops what happens it executes a sequence of a statements a block of codes and abbreviates the code that manages to loop the variables or you can say it goes for iterating the single element from any data type or any characters or any string or any data kind like it can be tuple and whatever i have said right different different kind of things and infinite loops can be done using like while true and like that right so if i say while true i'll give you a you have a lot of questions for this loop what is assignments are also there right so if i say while true and like uh, if i say enter anything like uh, x is equals to and anything okay and then print x I say x it is getting printed right again something comes so until i enter nothing right so i'm entering something see every time this is an infinite loop and keep on running and so how would you stop this right now hmm? you need to stop this what you will do is uh, for these cases you will have to click on this and you'll get an error trace back something no see it's an okay. 
here you go and then this traceback error will come that's it interrupted by the user okay right so you, you have to write the things while true this 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 right so like you can write that if your x is equals to this nothing then break the loop else print yeah, uh, what, sorry so if I write x it keeps on running it, it, if I did nothing it comes out of the loop that's it okay. so these are the things okay sometimes conditions can be in the top sometimes in the middle right so different kind of things are there I have to look on how you are running up your things okay now comes the for loops as I said it's just goes for iterating over a sequence on different data types okay like if I say data type will be running tomorrow right how it goes like let's say if I take name of some companies and let's say corporates so I write like Google Microsoft IBM very simple okay three let's see two five minutes HP HCL so if I just want to print all the elements I'll say call if I get if I want to know the individual element using the indexing too, right? Indexing you have learned, right? If not, I'll discuss it again. So using the indexing too, if you want to learn with that, right? So in those cases, what it'll do is for something as a variable, whatever you want to take, you can take as a variable. So let's say for the var, that's it, right? So for any variable in your data type now it, it should have any uh, values only that it will be running right so for var in call you print the variable and you run this so you'll get all the elements over there now you can run the same thing of the uh, break and the continue here too it will be running as same very simple same thing goes okay see like if I say I want to print Google Microsoft IBM that's it I want to stop at IBM so what it will say is that for let's say I am taking very simple so for I in for print core and here you don't have to do any implementations right so if your I is equal equals to core or what I say, I mean, display. You can just check it here only. Or else you can print the I. So as soon as it reaches IBM, we stopped. Right? So before IBM, if you want, you can stop at HP. Okay. What else also you can use as extra statement as I said. Okay. So this is the break statement. Very simple. Now if you want to continue. IBM would be continued. Uh, HP would be continued. Sorry. Okay, like this, your 
follow paths right so iterations in a sequence basically you can go for that okay now with the strings how it works like if i say this is a string it's an alphabet a string i'm taking like a reward you can see what is there python loops okay now i want to print everything here whatever the things are there exactly what is the length first i'll see 12 right so 12 individual elements needed okay so let's say for i n w print i so 12 individual elements see and we'll say also the index number of i so see the 12th individual elements right so starts from zero always so p at zero then one then two three four five this is the blank or you can say the space what we have used sixth one and then seventh four what is this okay so four four ten and eleven right index numbers you are getting basically o is at fourth right so that is why you are getting the eighth the ninth is also four all right like that with the very first thing keep some okay so you can write here how it goes on changing okay like that now you can use the ranges too like if I say the same thing for I in range sorry in range okay for I in range len of your W So it's a print w of i like this see the same things so w of i basically means the index w of i all right So this is how it goes on running okay now you can check a prime number not a prime number what i have shown you using the same fields okay so like the past statement what i said is just useful nothing less than null operations you can use here like if i say in the word okay for i in w okay if your i is equal equals to P. then pass okay if this is this then pass and print class sorry pass statement Here what you see is p y and you did nothing here i equals to t pass nothing done see t is here okay pass statement is there nothing happened so it basically does nothing that's very simple thing okay so it's a null operation what you can say it's just use as for names okay so you just write codes you don't need for those things here in the form okay 
and you can do a lot of operations using for uh, you can make a game for rolling dice getting a like guessing numbers for making a lot of things right like let's say a very small program I'm showing you like if I say uh, we want to go for head and tail right tossing a coin very simple So we require the model of random here, right? So you you want only head and tail. Okay. Now your head and tail must be H and T, or you can have numbers one or zero, right? One or zero. But if I say any random value from your choices, you know, like random dot choices how it works so it might be t sometimes it might be h okay so my choice is only t and h so it could be h or it could be t it will give you an error. You need to make it like this. All right, let it be. So I'm not going to go with the numbers, right? So what I'll do is while true, like I'm giving you how loop works. Okay, giving you just an order. So while this is this will be taking as an input from the user, and uh, let's say this is user input. Let's say user equals to input enter h or t. That's it. Very simple, right? And whatever the user will be entering, like in the even in the short form, what we'll do is uppercase. I'll, I'll learn in the next class what is this all. Okay, uppercase. Now, and we have taken our choice, right? User choice. That's it. Very simple. So. Basically, you need to print this. That's it. After this entry, you need to print this. And if the user what entered, okay, we need to store this also. Otherwise, cannot check it right so let's say this is the out output as it would be random so if user is equal equals to out then we'll print okay you can be toss okay or instead of okay you can write it Congratulations, you win the toss. Okay, or you can write else, but it's not heads, it's sorry, you can take this, it's tail. All right, that's you have done this. That is your uh, heads and tails. Okay. I can give the condition to the user with this. So once you have completed your things, you can give your conditions. Like if you want to run again or not. So what would be the options to the user? That is input toss again, and you can give an entry. That is y oblique n. I can just write y or n. I should not write here. Hmm. So now you give your condition like if the option of the user is equal equals to n. 
And what is it the user gives? Now here, go with case fold. Case was comparisons, okay? I will learn tomorrow with this. If this is equals equal to this, you go on breaking the loop. That's it, very simple. All right, so let's run this. So enter h of t, if I say h, oh, what is this? String has changes. My attribute of uppercase. Okay, just a minute. So, yeah. hmm. so h, it's still, so that's what is wrong. So if I say yes, it goes again. So enter again, I say heads. Again, it goes tail. Okay, yes, head. Again, it stays. All right, so if I say no, it stopped. And I also want to see the out, what it is coming. Stay okay. Okay, it stays. Yeah, it is coming at sh we are getting it stale. User is Okay, okay, okay. If user output lies and would be a problem. So, what we can do is heads or tails. Lies and would be coming in both the things. Because head would be also coming, tail would be also coming. Out would be having a result. Okay, just a minute, let me run this. Okay. Correctly, it's tail. I'm coming as a T. Okay, tails is coming only an H. Okay, it might be giving H or it might be given T because last time it was giving T. All right, let's see it. Mm. Right no and let's copy this and using the for loops let's do this so for i in a range of ten times okay we just be printing this let's see what comes the output so T H T H T H H H H and heads are for most of the times. Right? So random dot choices are something different. How it works basically. If I show you the documentation of this, so you can give your digits like how you want. Okay. So it be random dot choices and the population first. The weightage and then the cumulative weightage and then k and basically this is used in something called as um, numpy right in the library okay that is a different thing okay we'll be taking it as like I'm just showing you how it works. Let's say I want only one, two, and three. Okay, so I'll be giving my percentage that how much percent I want for one. Like I, I want thirty percent for one, so zero point three. And 
40% for 2, 0.4. So probability is always goes with 1 only, right? So 3 and 4 has been done. That is 3 plus 4, you go with 7. So you're left with 3, right? So I have to give 0.3 to the last. That's it. Very simple. And let's say I want total output as some 50 numbers. Okay, so in 50 numbers, 30% would be 1, 40% would be 2, and the 30% would be 3. Or let's say if we do less, so 2%, 1%. Sorry. 4%. So it will be again drop it. Five. Yeah, this is fine. So you can make difference there. Yeah. And the size would be fifty. That size basically means that I want number of outcomes as fifty outcomes. Okay. So I'll just print it. Just wait for some time. see the output there as 2, 3, 2, 1, 2 and all this. Okay. Now we can find exactly how many 2 are there. Okay. So how many 2 are there? Or oh, double object. No. Size. Not cool. Mm. We can use this. So one Y. These are the things. Okay. So that is a complete tuple. So these are the index values basically like 0, 2, 3, 4, 9, 12, 16, 17. In this places we will be having two. So how many one we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can see. I like. What you can do is you can take this in a list form. Like if it works. So count the numbers of two. Twenty one. Okay. Count the numbers of one. Six and count the number of three. It's twenty-three. Hmm. Oh, twenty-three. Okay, so three has been 40% is having three. Okay, just a minute, let me check again. Twenty-three and two is twenty-one. Okay. So let's increase the size. Hundred and or let's say if I say ten rows and ten columns. So ten rows, ten columns. Now if I see what two zero obviously. So you have this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine places are there. We will be finding this. So this is completely a different thing. These are arrays. Okay. We'll discuss how this are being made. Like when we'll be going in pandas, we'll be looking on how these are being made. All right. So that's the thing. How you go with for loops. How you write up your things right the while loops anyone having any confusions in the for or in the while loop if you have doubts you can ask so in the practice question i had one doubt so yeah ask so the, when we the question which is given in the practice set is when we enter a day a particular day of a week enter a day it would tell us which week and which month it belongs so can you please tell the solution of that program enter the because you when you enter a particular day what month and what week does it belongs day you are saying right yes sir So how would you define a day? It's a week and month. Like Sunday comes every day, sorry, every week in a month. If I, if I, 
52 or 53 Sundays would be there. Yeah. So exact question, what is that exact question? Can you send here? Send this here in the chat box, I'll see this one. Like, my question would be wrong because, or do you, how can you predict? What prediction is there? Like, in once in a week, you'll get every time. So, a day, how many times it is coming in a year? If it is, uh, according to that, might be. So tell me the question. Which assignment it is? Assignment number? Okay. Uh, let me stop your recording. Sir, so, so the 